Poker and politics, my final thoughts. I'm Robbie Straczynski. Well, the poker world sure does seem to be talking a lot about politics' place in the game. I think it's a great thing, and I'm specifically grateful to Mr. Nolan Dalla for helping to get the issue the coverage that it really deserves. So many poker sites from top to bottom have covered the issue, and many well-known poker pros have expressed their opinions, as have many talented poker writers. I encourage anyone who's watching this video, if you have the time, read up about the issue of poker and politics. People are saying a lot of interesting things that really ought to be considered on both sides of the debate. And a further point about that, I think that it's important to be open-minded about all this and not necessarily have a predetermined opinion. Let's all be discussing this and debating the issue of politics and poker online, social media, blogs, videos not at the poker table. To his great credit, Olivier Bousquet has also spoken openly about why he did what he did when he wore the Save Gaza shirt. You can find that, Mr. Bousquet, on episode 92 of the Thinking Poker podcast with Andrew Brokos and Nate Mavis. I was also a guest myself on the Mark Hoke show uh, on August 27th where I spoke in more detail about the politics and poker subject, as well as addressing uh, Mr. Bousquet, what he said on that podcast. Uh, a link is available online. Many other podcasts have carved out time uh, to discuss the politics and poker issue, and I think this is a great thing, and again, listen to as many as you can. I realize, however, that lots of people prefer to get their information not just by reading poker blogs and not just by listening to podcasts, but also via video. So that's why I've decided to record this. I want to return the favor uh, of Nolan Dalla's phenomenal endorsement of my site. Thank you very, very much for that, uh, cardplayerlifestyle.com, uh, by encouraging you to visit nolandalla.com. Nolan writes incredibly prolifically, and not just about poker, he writes about a lot of all sorts of interesting subjects, a lot of varied topics. I don't necessarily agree with him either, but it does make for some very interesting reading. And I will come out publicly, as I have before, and support him uh, as a nominee for the Poker Hall of Fame. I am tempted to make some points about the Israeli-Palestinian conflict itself, but I don't think that's what this debate is about. Nolan, perhaps you and I could talk about it one day when we finally meet in person. So let's specifically address some of the points that Nolan Dalla brings up in his 38-minute video, which you can find on his site. Uh, politics and poker. Private conversations versus public displays. The place of politics and poker, in my opinion, is away from the table. I agree with you, Nolan. No politics in the middle of a hand, never in the middle of a hand. Amongst themselves, players ought to be able to talk about whatever they want. Nobody wants to see police standing over someone's shoulder and monitoring what players say. That's ridiculous. But while I wouldn't talk politics at the table, talk shouldn't be forbidden. But public displays ought to be. Television is what makes statements like that public. And there's a fine line between what goes on amongst nine or ten players at the table versus what's broadcast to a TV audience. Daniel Negreanu uh, he noted in his blog post about this issue, saying that there ought to be separate rules for televised tables and non-televised tables. That's a really good point. He makes a lot of very good points in his blog, a lot of good arguments. You should read it. But I don't know if that particular solution is practical. Why not test it? You know, it certainly can be tested out. On the issue of censorship versus dress code. In his video, Nolan advocates making rulings on a case-by-case -case basis. I think this is likely to be logistically problematic because this opens the door to favoritism and bi potentially biased censorship on the part of poker stars and other sanctioning bodies in the poker world. So I really do think that the wiser course of action is to have a general rule. And I maintain that the best way to do this is via a dress code. A dress code is not a negative imposition on the freedom of expression. It's a positive thing. Basically, a dress code says to all the players, we'd like you to please respect our events. If you think that my calling for a dress code is audacious or you know out of line, 
I'll point you in the direction of Poker Hall of Famer Mike Sexton. He has been calling for a dress code in poker for years. Not, now on the point, not a suspension of expressionism, rather a focus on poker. I don't believe as, that Poker Stars wants, as Nolan says, a, I'll quote here, muted, unconnected, uncaring poker players who've turned their brains off at the tables or when walking in the tournament area. I don't think Poker Stars wants that. I do believe that what they want people who have entered their tournaments, they, they want them to be playing in the tournaments, focused on the poker, and that's also probably what they wish to be broadcast to their viewing audience. In other words, they don't want viewers, like you and me, to be distracted by displays, okay, not talk, displays of a political nature. Apropos, uh, the corporate head of, uh, the head of corporate communications at Poker Stars, Mr. Eric Holmeiser, he stated, okay, listen, listen carefully, we will refuse entry to poker players displaying statements of any kind. That's a very important word. Nolan, you say that you've never seen a fight at the table because of political differences. Well, you know what? I have. Between myself and a pro-Palestinian at the Commerce Casino in L.A. Luckily, it was a cash game, and I was able to ask for a seat change, and that's it. No more argument. But let me ask you, whether you've seen an argument at the poker table because of political reasons, or whether you haven't, do you want to? I don't think so. On the point of, is poker itself political? Is everything political? We don't get to decide. Nolan, your best point was when you put on the t-shirt supporting online poker, and you said, isn't this political? I think, I think, that expressing solidarity with other poker players is a good thing. It's part of what makes us all part of this, this poker community. But I don't consider poker itself to be a political issue. I think of poker as a game. Other people, like yourself, Nolan, uh, other people watching this video, may think of poker as political, but whether it is or isn't is essentially up for the sanctioning tournament body and officials to decide on, not us. Then there's a very important point here. What do the players owe poker stars? People keep on saying, they keep on commenting, Players pay their own way to get into these tournaments, and they ought to be able to dress however they want. It's not like they're getting anything in return for their rake, for their money. To that I say the following, and no one's really said this out loud. Where and at which events would players play if they wouldn't be held in the first place? The services being provided to the players are, number one, the hosting of the events, and number two, the televising of said events. Yeah, things, they used to be different. Nobody wants to go, but nobody used to say anything before TV, before these huge tournaments came along. But you know what? I don't think we want to go back to the days of trying to find a Texas Hold'em game outside of Los Angeles or Las Vegas. I don't, I don't think we want to go back to the days of 100 player, you know, World Series of Poker main events. That, that's the past. Most people who love poker, including myself, including Nolan, we want to see the game grow. The main event, the, sorry, the main vehicle for this is television. The game of poker and all players who play the game, we owe TV for the poker boom. Most players and fans, we want to see more poker on television, and we want other people to see it too for the first time. It used to be that most players, professionals, they used to protect their hands no matter what. But you know what? They've come to terms with showing their whole cards. That's what makes for exciting TV. That's why people watch the game. And they do that in order to promote the advancement of the game. And the game and players, everyone, I believe, is better off for this. In short, my point on that, the global growth of the game of poker is precisely what we get as compensation for following the rules and the restrictions of televised poker events. I made it clear in my post, and with this point I'll basically conclude, and, and in my tweets you know, during the uh, EPT live broadcast, that I'm opposed to all political statements at the table, including those that support my own point of view. I never criticized anyone for having those particular views, just that they were allowed to broadcast them publicly while sitting and playing poker in televised tournaments. That needs to be made clear. Raising awareness is critical for the welfare of our society. Nolan, you said it, I agree with you 100%, but there's a time and a place to do it, in my opinion. 
Poker players ought to speak out in support of causes, against causes, but not at the table while they're playing. As soon as they step away from the table during a break, go ahead, speak your minds. Victoria Corin uh, and others, had, they, they seem to call me out for being a troublemaker and for butting into something that isn't my business. I think I defended my stance on that in the comment that I left on Victoria's blog post. I encourage you to read it. I'll put a link to it. What we all could have been discussing, though, we could have been discussing the poker play at the uh, EPT Super High Roller, and, and that's really what people tuned in to see, including myself originally. But Olivier and Daniel, they chose to make it about something else. They, made, they chose to make it about politics. Artists and athletes for the most part, they don't really, they usually don't speak out politically while performing. They do it in interviews, in speeches, articles, tweets. Nobody seems to complain that the dress code for athletes is censorship or removing their freedom of speech. No one brings up the, you know, the, the 1968 Black Power salute at the Olympics. It's an iconic image, no doubt, very famous. But let's not forget one important thing. The two gentlemen who held their arms, they were expelled from the Olympic Games because of it, and they were subsequently ostracized from the United States sports establishment altogether. Just uh, a little bit about me. You know, I want to I just thank everybody for watching and for listening to what I had to say. I think at this point, after all the back and forth, Nolan and I can agree to disagree. That's fine. And I'll just say I've definitely enjoyed debating this uh, with you, Nolan, over the last couple of weeks, both blog posts and now here on video. Um, some of you may be wondering, who's this guy? Who's Robbie Straczynski? Uh, I'm obviously not nearly as well known as uh, Nolan. I'll just tell you a couple things. Um, I'm a dual U.S.-Israeli citizen. I moved here to Israel 15 years ago after growing up in Los Angeles. I founded the Card Player Lifestyle Poker blog back in 2009, and um, I've written hundreds of articles there. I've also written for plenty of other um, great, excellent poker publications, uh, both print both on and online. I'm also the co-host of the Top Pair uh, Home Game Poker Podcast, along with Bruce Briggs. I encourage you to tune in. And a little shameless plug, I'm the co-creator of the Poker Notes Live app. Uh, it's a free app. You can get it on iOS and uh, Android. Uh, it's designed to help you take notes while you play live poker. Like many of you, I love playing in my home game every week. Like many other poker writers out there, I do what I do in the poker world to try to make a difference and grow the game. Thanks for listening. I encourage you to check out my poker blog, cardplayerlifestyle.com, and to you, Nolan, l'chaim.